Good afternoon, friends. Mike Bolin here with uh, Mike Bolin Ministries, assisted by my dear friend and grandson, Josh Garner, who's working the boards for us today. I, I want to deal with something a little different today. I've had some thoughts going on in my own head about some things that I'm dealing with going through that I'd change if I could. I would be doing it differently, and I'd be in a different position right now at this moment than I am. But there's a thing, you, you've all heard this. I never really had read it in, in its entirety, just the first, really the first, the first stanza. But uh, a theologian of first half of the 20th century, a man named Reinhold Neighbor, who was a, a man of wisdom and understanding, uh, wrote a thing called the Serenity Prayer. And you've heard the Serenity Prayer. This is the part you probably know. You may not have heard the rest. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Now, that's the first verse, but let's do the rest of it. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardships as the pathway to peace, taking, as he did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Uh, if I read the rest, the other uh, couple of stanzas, after the first one, I probably wouldn't have been quite as, quite as irritated as I had been at times about this, what seems to me almost a superfluous request, asking God to grant the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Because, darling, I want you to know something. When I was a younger man, maybe not now, uh, in my 60s, but when I was a younger man in my 20s and 30s, probably even into my 40s, maybe into my 50s. The reason I didn't like this was because I didn't think there was anything I couldn't change. And some of you feel that way. You work at it long enough and hard enough and put a lot of effort into it and a lot of prayer. Uh, go whole hog or die. I mean, go for it. Ought to be able to change anything in our way. Well, not so. You see, there's a reality here that you... <laughs> And I, we're really not in charge of the whole world. Uh, when our son Stephen was a little boy, he once wrote a one-page theme. I, I think he might have been six or seven at the time. But the title of it was, If I Were King of the Whole Earth. <laughs> I still have it somewhere in, our, in, in my stuff. What if you were king of the whole earth? Do we really want to turn it over to you? Well, I can tell you for sure you don't want to turn it over to me. Because if it were turned over to me, I'm not sure I would do any better than a whole lot of other people that are out there trying. Because you see, the secret to it all is realizing and understanding and knowing that God is in control. That it is God, in fact, who lives in us, who hears us, who protects us, who guides us, who surrounds us with his grace, who makes a way for us where there is no way. Actually, he's in charge. And if he's in charge instead of you, then I'm prepared right away to call that a good thing and not a bad thing. Uh, I don't really want to live in a world that any human being has got that much control over. Much rather live in a world that God has control over. But some of you are saying right away, God's got control of the world and it's in the mess it's in. What's he done wrong? What is God doing wrong? Well, if God's doing anything wrong, it might have to do with giving man so much authority, giving man so much power, that man could mess it up. Because you see, a whole lot of the authority in this earth and a whole lot of what d does get done is done because, not because God's failed, but because man continually fails. Man continually stumbles. Man continually struggles. Thus, the explanation of the quality of your life and mine. Saints, the truth is, the more we give grace to God, the more uh, God gives grace to us, the more we accept it. See, this word acceptance, is this concept of acceptance is a much bigger word than you and I really know. If we accept that we can't change some things, then maybe instead of trying to change those things, we'll begin to work with what that thing is and what it means and what it means for us and what it means for everyone else. In other words, we'll make our contribution. We will help out. 
We will get involved. We'll get involved with our wives. We'll get involved with our husbands. We'll get involved in our church. We'll get involved in our community. We'll get involved in what's going on. We will become instruments of God. And as God touches us and uses us, then the world will change. Not because you changed it or I changed it, but because you and I working with God, walking in his will, doing his will, knowing his will, entering, entering into his will, have in fact begun to make change. This, uh, this line in the first stanza, the last line, the wisdom to know the difference. One of the things I've loved about getting older, there's a whole lot of things I don't love about getting older, but one of the things I love about getting older is that I really think I've grown in wisdom in many ways. And sometimes I know when to not get involved in a fight. I know when to stay away from certain things and not bother. I know when it's my involvement or my input is just not going to make a difference at all. I've learned to not say certain things to certain people. There was a time in my life I thought if I thought it, I needed to say it to somebody. I don't think that anymore. The wisdom to know the difference is the wisdom to attack those things that you can really make a difference in. Leave the rest to somebody else. Most of all, leave it to God. It's, saints, a great truth today that if God's in control, it works better. It works much better. So let's talk about what's going on with Mike Bolin and Mike Bolin Ministries and the family. Steve was in to visit for Christmas. We had a wonderful time uh, with the family together. Uh, as, as some of you may remember or may know, uh, surgery I had scheduled for the 18th of December uh, got put off. As far as I know, it's still put off. I'm uh, trying to do some things that will that will move me toward that surgery. The sooner the better, more quickly is better than slower. But again, having talked about doing God's will instead of my own, I guess I really do have to put that in God's hands, don't I? But saints continue to pray for us. You know, one of the things I think I enjoy the most, one of the things that blesses me the most, is my interaction with some of you. You know, I've learned that if I have your phone number and you have mine, we can stay in communication. Uh you may not answer my call, but sooner or later I'll get to you. Sooner or later I'll wear you down. You'll return the call. And I love to talk to you. I love to talk to my friends. I love to talk to acquaintances, for that matter. I love to talk to you at the next table in the restaurant. I love, love to talk to the stranger because it is that stranger that I might influence for the kingdom of God and I might affect his eternal soul. So the ministry's, well, it's kind of on hold in a way, and then in another way it's not on hold at all. God's moving, God's having his way, God's real, God's opening doors for ministry, really some of the things that have happened in the last month on a personal level and just some of the seemingly smaller things that we got involved in in our interaction with people, some things that happened in the lobby at church, uh, really uh, have, have allowed us to see God changing lives. And I'm pretty excited about it when a couple begins to get restored. I'm pretty excited when... when uh, when people gather around somebody and begin to support them and love them through their hard hard seasons and times. No, the world that you and I may think is lost and gone is by no means lost and gone. We live in a world that still has and will always have the presence of the living God and the help of God. Saints, I thank you today for listening. Be praying for us. Be lifting us up. Help us get through this season as Sue and I uh, together seek the Lord and live for him as best we know how. God bless you. We love you today. May he have his way in all of our lives. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. I hear you singing over me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. And it's beautiful. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. It covers every part of me. My soul is silent, I am found And it's a beautiful sound